Okay, so welcome to uh, Thursday morning Restore Yoga. Uh, I'm Kathy for those of you that might be tuning in that haven't met me before. Um, first class of the new year, so I'm, uh, I'm really excited that, uh, that we're including this in, in our week and wow, in uh, <laughs> all, of, all of the things that, that our, our brain is, is attending to right now and our inherent negativity bias where things that um, are kind of, kind of uh, darker uh, stick like Velcro and, and things that are, are more positive and hopeful take a little bit more, um, well, they're more like Teflon. So uh, spending some time just shifting gears and making some room uh, to hold it all. Uh, we know that uh, compassion, again, lots of research and science, if we can build up that muscle, then everything else, all of the other, um, you know, goals and projects and things that we want to do to uh, mm, increase our, our happiness quotient uh, and to also be a little more uh, resilient and effective in our relationships with others, they, they all are um, much more successful if we have that that compassion component. So maybe that's something for this morning as you begin. Um, I've got, well, I have a couple of mats. I also have a towel. Uh, these are just things that are nice to have for your practice. It's a slow moving. We're gonna do a lot of stretching out today. So it may be a little more active because I feel like we're we're kind of in our, in our closets and in our huddles. So I've got a, a scarf. You can use a strap or a bathrobe belt, whatever you have at home, um, couch cushions, bed pillows. It's good to have a little bit of that. If you don't have any of those things this morning, don't go off uh, looking too far for it. Sometimes the furniture in your room just presents itself once we get going. So hi, Vera, Samantha, Kathy, Joan, Jennifer, Ariane. Awesome. Uh, we'll begin lying down. You don't need anything uh, just to stretch out on your back. If you do have the, the strap, then have it near you where you can grab it. Of course, if you do want to put some support underneath your thighs, I've got this towel underneath my my hips just so it's a little more cushioning for the lower back. Your legs can be extended long or perhaps the knees are asking to be in a, a bent position with the feet a little wider than the knees can fall into touch each other. You just let the arms move into a shape that feels natural um, and comfortable for your shoulders. The palms might be open towards the ceiling or you may find that just naturally the hands connect with the, the torso in some way. So right away that can be just a physical move towards that, that muscle of compassion Self-compassion, compassion towards others. It's all really the same thing. You can, if that sounds too cheesy, then it's just having a, a friendliness to what's presenting itself. It's not easy. In fact, it's a quite a challenge to slow down and let yourself feel what, what's arriving. We've got the ground coming up to meet the back body. So see where you're feeling those body parts connecting through the back of the hips, the skull. 
the bottoms of the feet. And while there may be uh, an increase in uh, restlessness or a connection or being drawn into the thinking part of our awareness, it's not a problem. In fact, it's something to celebrate to allow yourself the time to have the space to just be aware of how much of that looping and thinking and planning, judging is just part of our, those things that we don't have a lot of control over. Genetics, evolution, heredity, So we'll invite all of that to be a little more of just a background hum as we turn our attention towards the body, now the front body. Feeling any sensations that are here in terms of the lungs doing what they do. That expansion as you feel the breath coming in and the carbon dioxide moving out. So we just start with mindfulness of the body, resting in the shape. And then mindfulness of breath as it's happening. your natural pace of breath with nothing that needs to be corrected or fixed or lengthened. Those things may occur, the breath may deepen and get longer, but it's just happening in a more organic way. Opening the awareness to rest around the face, around the oval of the face, and all that is here this morning. If you're anything like me, then sometimes that's where I'm going to feel some tightness and tension at first in around the space between the eyebrows or the jaw. Just seeing what's here. And then coming back into the entirety of the body, resting in this shape. The back body representing equanimity, our ability to hold all of the experience. Balancing that with the front body, that compassion element, that muscle, the heart. So we can be a little more present as we breathe and move together, aware that we're sharing this practice from our own home bases. And beginning to bring the palms together and rub them together and invite some energy to move from the arms towards the wrist, towards the hands, into the palms, 
and prana, friction, heat, whatever it is that you're feeling there, just start to shift your awareness from connecting with the, the thoughts. They continue to happen, but just to move it into the body, resting the palms over the face, cheekbones, some sort of coverage over the eyes or just hovering above the eyes if you don't want to touch your face right now. Just feel that transfer of energy from the palms to the face. Move the hands out towards the temples and make some circles in the temples. Good, and then take your thumbs between the eyebrows and press into the eyebrows or into the crease between the eyebrows, just in the middle there where maybe if you've been on a screen or working on a difficult mental task, you can just give a little bit, a bit of a, a press there, an affirmation and some massage for that area of the brain. Start to draw your thumbs up and then across the forehead. So just move it out like you're ironing out some of the knots. Don't need to know what they are, just moving things out to a little more of the back, back regions of your experience right now. And draw your fingers down the sides of your face, little circles there. There's no right or wrong to any of this, just to what feels therapeutic in your body, interesting, curious, this is a laboratory getting into the top and bottom, that little divot indentation where the jaw, bottom and top of the jaw meet. Maybe you wear a night guard. And then bring the hands back and rub them together one more time. Create all that heat and friction. Rest one hand over the heart, one hand over the belly. As you return your awareness once again to breathing, the lungs doesn't have to be that you're tightly clenching or, or gripping around the breath, but just that you're aware of some movement here. Let's stretch out now and reach the arms and legs away from each other. Take a big, long, juicy stretch and Reach the right foot away from the left fingers. So you get a little more of that side cross body. And then the left foot away from the right fingers. And then walk it out from side to side, reaching one side of the body a little longer than the other, getting into the sides of your ribs, the hips. It's this really simple lengthening and expanding. Feel all that space coming underneath your lower back and the openness through the front body. And then hug your knees in towards your chest and give a squeeze there. Lengthen the tailbone. Let your knees start to move away from each other and take your hands to the tops of your knees and do some big, slow, or they don't have to be big. I'm just circling the knees away from each other. So just warming up and massaging the lower back. It's like you're stirring the thigh bones, getting in a little bit into the digestive organs as the knees come in and then go wide. If you practice the Ujjayi ocean breath and the breath is just in and out through the nose and change direction. If you have a cold or if the breath guidance that I give causes any angst, then just let that go and come back, bring your feet to the floor, walk your fingertips down towards your heels and slide your shoulders a little further away from the ears so you're in a position as if you were going to come into a bridge. And just take a breath in there, feel some of that breeze underneath the lower back. As you exhale, press the low back down towards the floor, but don't let the, the hips lift, lift up at all. And then as you inhale, send the tailbone down towards the earth. So it's a small movement, warming up the lumbar, the sacrum, rocking back and forth like that. A few times as you inhale, draw the tailbone down. And as you exhale, 
the ribs heavy. Inhale, feel your feet on the floor, feel your palms, feel all those supporting body parts in the back. So that strong back, soft front. And then on the next exhale, let your tailbone start to peel up, your hips lift up a little bit so that you do feel that uh, the hips that are lifted, but you're more in a, a table or a reverse plank pose. So it's not your fullest bridge. A lot of the upper back is still on the floor and draw your heels towards each other. Reach the knees long. So take a couple of breaths here, feeling some space at the back neck and a little bit of a wake up call in the hamstrings. One more inhale and then roll it all the way back down. Let's press the low back down again. Exhale there. Lift the hips again. You might peel up a little more each time. And then let the exhale bring you back down. Now just moving through with some breathing, rolling the hip fronts a little forward towards the thighs as you get to the bottom. And then press the low back down again as you exhale. Just a straight lift up on the inhale. Maybe more of your upper back is coming up. Just make sure you don't have a big pillow or anything underneath your head. And then exhale, roll it all back down. Let's do that one more time. Rock the hips forward. Press the low back down. Lift the hips as the inhale reaches the knees. And exhale, taking your time to feel it all out this morning. Not the same as yesterday. Let's draw the right knee in towards the chest now and give it a nice tight squeeze. So it's optional if you'd like to stretch the left leg out, you can do that. Or you can keep the foot on the floor if that feels better for your back. Do a few of those swishing massages of that right knee. A little bit side to side. So you get into those digestive organs that we're sometimes take for granted the all of all the, the functioning that they're working pretty well. Good, and then slow that down and circle the ankle. We'll just breathe in to circle in one direction and breathe out to circle the other direction. If you want to follow those cues, if it helps to keep your mind a little less restless, circling the ankle one way as you inhale and the other way as you exhale. Good, and then we're gonna take the strap if you have it and just take it around the bottom of the right foot and press that heel up towards the ceiling. Just have an easy grip on the strap and then hug the knee back down towards the, the chest. Press that heel up. We're not trying to strive or get it, the leg to be straight. We're just feeling the sensations in the back of the thigh. Exhale, squeeze. So the hip flexor in the front as the knee bends in and then lengthen up the hamstring. Let's do one more time, hugging the thigh back in towards the chest and then reaching that leg up. So with the leg up for a little bit here, just comfortably, you might have to wrap your hands around the strap a couple of times. Maybe your elbows are on the floor if the strap is, is long enough. And your left leg again could be straight or with the right leg reaching up, you might prefer to, to bend it just to feel that, that equanimity across the back of the hips. Let's point the toes now. So you should feel more of a stretch in the front of the ankle and then exhale, press the heel up, getting into the calf and the Achilles tendon. Point the toes, inhale, and exhale, flex the heel up. Let's point the toes, breath comes in, and carbon dioxide moves up as the heel reaches up. Good, and then just let the leg be there, kind of in a, just a neutral position. So the heel can be back quite a bit or towards the front of your mat. Try not to draw the toes towards the face. If you need a bend at the knee, just keep that there. Let's take both ends of the strap into the right hand. You might wanna add some weight with the left hand on the left hip. 
and start to open up that thigh just a little bit towards the side and just take it open there as you breathe and continue to feel lots of ground through the left side of the body the left arm can be at your hip or it can reach to the side or reach towards the back on a diagonal so co-create what feels therapeutic, what feels good, what feels like some of that compassion, strong back, soft front, soft front, just more space to hold what's here. Let's take another breath. And bring the leg through center. Give both ends of your strap if you have it. If not, you can just be holding your thigh we're going to take that leg just a few inches across to the left. So without lifting up the right hip, I'm going to take my right thumb into my right hip crease and just wrap that hip crease down and around towards the left heel. I'm breathing here to feel what's going on in the outer right hip, thigh, an IT band connection all the way down the leg, all the sitting that we're doing or walking, hiking, some sort of activity that might be keeping you sane. Let's take another breath there. And then come all the way up and over. So you're a little more on your left hip. You could lift your hips a little to feel that. You could bend the bottom knee. The right arm might need to reach away and we really need to watch here for, for striving. So don't feel you have to bring that leg all the way across or anything like that. It's just a bit more of the twist. So we're, however we do that in the organs. And you could also bend that knee entirely and just hold the thigh for some support with your hand. Pillows, if you have them as well, can come underneath your thighs or between your knees if you'd rather be in a more of a restorative version. If it's comfortable for your neck, start to look towards your right arm and we'll take three breaths there. Just feeling the breath travel from the very base of the spine all the way up to the sternum and then back down to the base of the spine. It's a bit of a cloth wringing out feeling. One more time. And exhale, instead of coming back to center, come to actually lying on your left side. So bring your right knee now so it's, it's, on, uh, it's in front of your hip. You could have both knees bent. You could have a, a pillow or a towel, something be, between your knees. So this is where you really wanna be in that mindful, what does my body need or respond to right now? I'm gonna leave my bottom leg on the mat and then come back down. You can have a pillow underneath your head here, but it's okay if, you're, if your head falls down a little bit. So we'll do a moving twist. Now we're gonna bring the right hand and get a little into the shoulder to meet the left palm. So we're lying on our left hip and then we'll start to open up that right arm and then close it back up. If you have a ponytail holder, you might take that out, open up, so nothing is impeding your head. You might follow the fingertips with your gaze as you close on the exhale and reach the right palm a little further. Rolling it open on the inhale. Try to keep your, your knees heavy to the left side or if it's just the right knee that you have Try to keep it on the floor or support that you have. Exhale, reach, tip of the nose to the floor and then open that up again. Close on the exhale. So if you're interested, try a big circle now. So sweeping that right arm around towards the back and then out to the side, all the way down towards the hip and back towards the left palm. Reaching it up, breathing in. 
And all the way down as you exhale back to the start. Opening one more big circle in the direction that you're going. Back to start. And then switch direction. So reaching down towards the hip, open to the side, the arm could be bent. You may find those spots where your body is saying, not in here today. Just opening up a couple more of those. And it's always an option just to stay in, in stillness, in the twist, or lying on your side. Let's just take a breath together in the open shape as you look over towards your right arm or towards the ceiling. And one more inhale there. And exhale, slowly start to walk it onto your back again. Let's just do one more thing here. So right leg floats up in the air. You can hold on to the sides of your mat and we'll just keep it really loose in that right leg, shake it a little bit, bring some blood back to the heart. And then some circles with your toes on the ceiling. So the, the big thigh bone just stirring in the socket. Left leg can stay bent or it can straighten out. And those circles could be really tiny or you can take up some more space. The hips can roll around here. The leg can be just as bent as you want it. And you can explore clearing out a few of those cobwebs with your toes on the ceiling, maybe longer toenails than usual without our <laughs> pedicure so easily available. Good, and then bring that knee in one more time, give it a squeeze. Slide the right leg down to meet the left leg. In no hurry, taking in sensations, left to right, any imbalance, any more length or weight on one side of the body. And then let's come back to the bent knees with the feet on the floor, walking the fingers down towards the heels. Let's roll through a few more of those pelvic, either just the rocking back and forth to neutralize and find that balance and equanimity again. So we can go back to the front body opening, or you can take the bridge as you inhale. We don't have to do this in synchronicity, even though we're doing it together. Find your rhythm of breath that allows the hips to open and maybe lift into the bridge. And then ripple and roll back down, connecting with all of the vertebra. Having a fresh start, a new perspective, really, a different lens on on the experience or an attitude. Let's come back to meet with the hips on the floor and hug the left thigh in towards the chest on the exhale. Experiment with the right foot on the floor or the right leg to straighten out in the sort of a can opener giving the left thigh a hug. And just by virtue of having that thigh drawing in, the hip crease, hip flexor starts to wake up. We can circle the left ankle now, breathing in one way and breathing in the other way. I'm breathing out. <laughs> Inhaling one direction and exhaling the other. We've got to have both halves of that breath cycle or we get into a lot of trouble. Just feeling what you feel in your ankle and your foot, sole of the foot. One more time. Good. So we're going to bring the 
the strap in if you have it. Otherwise, just use your hands or a sock around the back thigh. If you've got the strap around the bottom of the left foot, you can reach that heel up to the ceiling and see how what this side has to offer now. You can reach up the strap or you can have a, if you have a longer strap, then your elbows can be on the floor. And the heel is reaching up but the leg can be quite bent and it may be a ways away from your body. Let's point the toes, breathing in that front shin, ankle, all of those connectors up through the knee and then exhale. The whole back line reaches the heel up. Point the toes, inhale, then exhale, flex that heel. Point, breathing in and exhale. Flex and one more time, point and flex. Might not be doing this in the same order. Let's hug that thigh back in on the exhale, a little towards the armpit. And then inhale, press the heel up. Exhale, draw it in. Inhale, press the heel up. Squeeze. Digestion likes this. And then press the heel up. And just keep the heel up now. You might soften the leg a little more and decide on the best position for your right leg, foot on floor or, or long. Let both ends of that strap, if you have it, into the left hand or just hold your outer left thigh. Start to let that left leg open a little bit and use your right hand to give some encouragement to keep the right hip heavy so it doesn't go very far. Your toes are reaching towards the floor. And the heel is still reaching up towards the ceiling. Even better if you end up coming across some furniture and the leg can't get so far, or you've got a wall there, that's always great. Zipping up through the core and then checking back in with the face. How's your breathing here? Is it? Is there that striving that's represented in the breath? You're going a little too far. And the skill is building that muscle of, of listening, giving attention to what's here. Let's come back through center. Take both ends of the strap now in the right hand. Use your left thumb and your left hip crease there where the thigh, fleshy part of the thigh meets the, the hip bone or the pelvis itself and wrap that area down towards the right heel. And start to take this leg over towards the right. Just, just trying to find that balance between, for sure, yeah, there's some effort. And some ease, just finding that middle line. And then go ahead, you can adjust. You might lift your hips a little or bend the bottom leg so you can kind of stand on your right foot and shift into the twist. So the left hip now is lifting up and the leg is moving more in the direction of the right side. Your left arm might reach away. And your left palm, sometimes if you have a, a bed post or a chair in the room, you can just grab onto that and pull a little bit just to get that feeling of groundedness. You could also bend both knees. You could have both knees together, resting more some more ease. You could have a pillow between your thighs. Let's take one more breath in there. Maybe look over the left shoulder. Good. And then I'll just flip so that you can see if you're looking or if you need to eventually. Just uh, following my vocal cues. So your left knee is on the floor, 
and the right shoulder is tucking underneath, you can definitely have a, a pillow underneath your head or something kind of firm, a rolled up uh, towel, but you don't need to have that. We're reaching the left fingers towards the right fingers. So my left knee is on the floor and in front of my left hip. You could also have both knees bent there. And then we'll open up the left arm. You just feel that bit of a stretch coming across the chest. And then close that up on the exhale. Roll the tip of the nose to the floor. And then wave it open. Feeling the collarbone bones start to move away from each other. Close it up on the exhale. Knees continue to face the side and it's the chest and the shoulders that are opening and closing. And start to explore the circle. So the left fingertips crawling around and maybe the side's gonna be different. You pause in places where it feels good to stay a bit longer, bend that top arm as much as you need. You can do the full circle down towards the hips or just keep it into something that's smaller. And it's beautiful if you just decide, oh, I just wanna be still and, and rest in the, in the twist or just on your side. And changing direction, if you're doing the circle, reach down towards the bottom of your mat and then open out to the left up and around, just exploring your range of movement without needing things to be any different than they are. The skill set that we're building a friendliness towards what's presenting itself physically, mentally, emotionally, having space for it all. Let's take a couple of breaths just in the open shape. If you're uncomfortable, please adjust to lower the knees or bend both knees or stick a pillow in between your thighs. Once more, inhale. Exhale. We'll come on to our backs again. The left leg, a little bit of a shake up in the air. And then just loose. Just start with the right foot on the floor with your knee bent so that you can find the equal back hips. And then those little circles just to start. You can hold the sides of your mat for some support. The big femur bone making its way around that ball and socket. And you can do those in both directions and to whatever the circumference is for you. If you hear those clicks and pops. Let's bring the knee back in towards the chest for one more squeeze. And then lengthen that leg long. And so important aspect of this practice is to take the pause, take the time out just to see how you're feeling. And that'll apply itself to activities that come later in the day off the mat, conversations before opening the mouth. And so let's bring it on over to either side. You can just roll on to one side. Take a moment in the rescue pose. Return awareness to some sort of anchor. It could be the breath, could be some of the sounds in your space, awareness of hearing, something tactile, the ground. Press yourself up. And let's come over onto the hands and knees. I have some padding underneath my knees or a couple of mats. And let's just take it into a child's pose for a moment. 
can make a little bit of space with the knees. Or you can have the knees right together as you come back. Come up onto the fingertips so you get a stretch out for the wrists. Wrap the upper arm bones underneath yourself. And let's take three breaths here. It's one, two, and three. Let's come back up and bring the palms or fists to the floor. You could have something higher up if you work with uh, blocks or a firm pillow. And press into your hands and let your chin come towards your chest. Just a few of these spinal warm ups, cat and cow. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lift the tailbone and then exhale. Peel the belly up and back. Shifting through on the inhale. And exhale, take it up and back. Inhale, shifting through. And exhale, take it up and back and come all the way back again in towards the child's pose. Stretching out the fronts of the ankles. And come back to a tabletop shape. Let's curl the toes under and sit back towards the heels. And walk the hands up. Or you can keep your hands on the floor. Just so that you're getting some of a wake up call through the bottoms of your feet. So either keep your hands on the floor, that can be super intense or the higher position here. Just being mindful of your spine if you're upright, that you're not arching in the lower back, nice and broad across the collarbones after some of those openers that we did. Let's come back forward again and pick up the feet, give them a bit of a massage out through the ankles. Start to sit back towards the heels. You can take the child's pose or walk the hands in closer or come right up again so you get a bit more of that stretch out for the ankles. If that's not feeling like it's quite enough for you, then you can bring your fingers tips behind the back, loop the shoulders and bring the weight a little further back. You could also lift the hips. It's coming into a reverse table or reverse bridge. And then come back through table. Mm. So however it is that you step up the right foot, we're gonna walk the hands on the inside of the right foot. So take your time, you can help yourself up if you're not a, um, in the habit of getting into these lunges. And we're just gonna take the back knee or the back shin and start to pivot it towards the right. So your legs are in this kind of funny angle. So my right thigh is perpendicular with my left shin. Can bring something, a, a pillow or a block or some books in there. And keep this action of the right shin moving away as you walk your hands towards the, the left side of your mat, towards the front of your mat. You can just let the head go here. And keep your, your right foot on the floor. So your right toes are facing the front of your mat. And you're just walking it over to the left. I'm taking a couple breaths there. Good, and then come back through center. Bring the back shin, so your left shin comes back into that just neutral, so we're in a, a lunge position. You can have your hands on either side of the foot, or you can bring something in again. So. 
You have a little more height and length through your arms as you sit into that lunge. And then peel your hips back and draw the toes towards your face and we'll rock it through a few times. A chair or the wall in front of you can also be uh, part of your practice as you shift through on the inhale, sitting low and then exhale to take it back. Inhale, shifting through. Exhale to take it back and pause. So the right hip crease is moving back in space. You might move your hands in a little bit uh, closer and wider for three, two, and one. Shift back through, moving anything that you were using out of the way and then sliding your way back. We'll walk the hands forward and we'll lift the hips this time and come into a puppy pose, extended child's pose with the forehead come towards the floor. So we're not sitting back towards the heels. We're not arching the whole back. We're drawing the belly in, getting a little more length that strong back and soft front here, just the metaphors and the physical body, the shapes we put ourselves in that help to balance out and give more space to hold it all. Let's walk the hands back again. Exhale into a cat. And then inhale back to a, a neutral table. So let's take the left leg and bring it forward. And then we're going to pivot the right shin. Right off your mat in the direction of the left side. So your legs are at this, these perpendicular angles to each other. Your left knee is moving away. From center, as you bring your hands over towards the right side of your mat, your left toes are facing the front of your mat. And you're just tightening the drawstring at the waist a little bit. Getting into that outer left hip. Just a little bit of a different pose than we might be used to doing. Just breathing here. Not forcing, not pushing, just allowing. Let's walk the hands back to center. Pivot the back shin. So you're back to that more neutral lunge posture. Use wall chair or blocks pillow. If you need a little more height, otherwise the fingers can just be on the floor on either side of that front foot. Just let the hips settle, take a breath in, and then exhale, slide the hips back, draw the toes towards the face, and then rocking lunges, sit low on the inhale, and exhale, bring it back. Inhale, sit low, exhale to bring it back. Take a last couple of breaths here. You might walk your hands in a little closer. Just let the upper spine be soft, the face, the jaw. So lots in the hips today. Shift back through to however it is that you extricate yourself from that shape. Back to the hands and knees. Let's take it into the cat or all the way back and towards the child's pose. If you're okay sitting back in child's pose, rest your forehead palm on palm or fist on fist and just let it go. If you don't feel knees, wanting to be on the knees anymore, then just come to take a seat and bring the soles of the feet together with a long diamond shape. 
dropping the forehead towards the feet or bringing in a pillow, something to give yourself a bit more of a booster. Wherever you're at, we'll take three more breaths. It's the wave, the expansion, the space at the top of the inhale. And that void, that emptiness at the bottom of the exhale. Once more, breathing in. And out. Good, let's come on to the tummy now. This is going to be resting palms on the one on top of each other and then the forehead on the palms and wiggle the hips here. So I'm gonna give a couple of options. This can be your pose. This is a, 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 a passive upper back bend, passive just as in more restorative, more nothing to do, nowhere to go, but still having that engagement of the shoulder blades down the back. Or you can slide your left knee out to the side. So bring it back into that in line with the hip, shin perpendicular. The left knee parallel with the front of your mat. You can have your forehead on your palms or you can come into a sphinx position with your Elbows underneath your shoulders, your hands could be clasped here. Reaching the right toes back a little bit and just trying to heavy, let the left hip be heavy down. Some different shapes, some different sensations than some of our usual postures in our flow practice. And so this is to lengthen underneath the, the adductor, the inner left thigh. So even reach or kind of crawl your left knee a little further away from you. One more breath there. Exhale. And if you're still in the sphinx position, you can just be uh, continuing to rest with your forehead on your palms or just in a traditional sphinx pose. You could also hold your face with your hands. If you'd like to do that inner thigh stretch, then bring your right knee out to the side. And so the right knee is reasonably in line with the hip. You can reach your right knee away a little further and try to just drop down the outer right hip. Try is not really the best word, just allow some heaviness there. You could stretch your torso out at the, again, just lying down. Energetically, the right knee is reaching away. The left leg is just doing nothing. Notice the mental activity. Return your awareness to an anchor, sound of breath, sensations of breathing, or your field of hearing. Last breath in there. And exhale. Start to slide the leg back in. Give it a shake. Let's move it back and up. A last child's pose or just come onto your back with your knees hugging in towards your chest. So lots of options.
Let's all meet on our back. And so for our final pose today, I'm gonna to suggest uh, to have a, an inversion, a supported inversion where the legs will be up and lots of options for that. You can have a pillow that's not at a great height underneath your sacrum. Not your low back, but down closer towards your tailbone. So you feel support. It could be this supported bridge pose or the legs can be lifted. If you have a couch that you can rest your shins on so that it comes up close to your um, thighs, if you don't have a, a pillow or a chair. If you're done, if you don't feel like any of that, then just resting on your back again. This is our, our closing shape. There's something that offers a complete load off. I know we did a lot more moving and stretching today than we sometimes might in this class. Some of that stale, some of those leftovers. Just letting them go. Let's take three breaths in through the nose and then out through the mouth. You could even purse your lips a little bit and kind of whistle it out slowly. Just coming back to feeling the support the ground, the strong back, the equanimity represented there. The open, soft front, other side of the coin, the compassion, friendliness. a force to be reckoned with in our bigger picture, core value goals. Just a rest here and open to the idea that everything is just as it should be right now. We're approaching our, our time. And there's no rush at all. That's the beauty of our home studios is that if you'd like to continue to be resting or in meditation, you can stay as long as you like. If you'd like to move on and close things out together, then just be aware of your surroundings. You know, bring the palms together again and rub them. Some of the heat and vibration coming back. Rest them over the eyes for a moment before. Actually, but as they're hovering over the eyes, you can let your eyes blink open there. Just to take in your surroundings and the light. And then you can be aware that if you do have your legs elevated, if your hips are elevated, to take yourself off that support slowly, rolling over to one side. And coming back to sit and let the palms rest in the lap or at the heart, just taking in the entirety of your body sitting in the shape, sitting in community, 
this awesome community of Boulevard Club yogis practicing together. So a nod of gratitude towards yourself, towards each other. Have a wonderful rest of your week, long weekend. And I will um, come back to the screen now. I'll turn the recording off if you um, want to say hi to each other or give me any feedback. Thanks, Kathy.